How you doing? Have you been feeding on God's Word this week? Hope so. Get nourishment from God's Word. Just a little will do you, but more is better, and a lot is sensational. It's like making a heavenly investment. The more you put in, the greater the return. This eternal financial update brought to you by Rob Hudson, one of God's Bible brokers. <laughs> you know, I'll be candid. I'd almost say anything if it would get you to be in God's Word more than you even are now. And if you haven't been, to get you in it. That's how important I believe it is. It will lead you to eternal salvation, eternal life, our Lord Jesus, and it'll give you peace beyond understanding. It will make you wiser than uh, you can possibly imagine, and it will help you discover yourself and see for who you are, for who you really are, and who God really is. It's the best deal on the planet, bar none. Well, welcome again to Truth Seekers, a Bible study group at First Southern Baptist Church, Guthrie, Oklahoma. We've been doing these videos for almost a year now, and I really enjoy being with you each week and sharing God's magnificent word with you. Hope you'll stay for a few minutes today as has been our course over the last five weeks and probably be for the next seven or eight weeks, God willing. Um, we're gonna, uh, we've been, been going through uh, the focus on, focus on the Family's Truth Project that's taught by Dr. Dale Tackett and I'll be giving you some highlights and a brief recap from the week before's uh, video lesson. And this week at the end, we'll look uh, back at uh, lesson five, science part one. Also, I know some of you are uh, reading a daily Bible plan with me designed to take you through the entire Bible in a single year. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes a day to do that. And I've been sharing with you each week a few of the things that I believe God's Spirit brought to my attention uh, from the week before. And they may or may not be uh, what God emphasized to you. Probably won't be. Um, God's Word speaks individually to each of us. But every year as I go through the Bible, it seems like God shows me more and different things each year. It's so exciting. It's, it's like opening a Christmas present every single day. And to come to think of it, I guess in, in a way it is a Christmas present, isn't it? Christ uh, brought to us every day. Isn't that cool? Well, let's pray and uh, then we'll get started. Father, thank you for indeed your word, your holy and mighty word, which directs us to salvation, gives us uh, insight, understanding, and meaning to life. It gives us comfort and confidence in the hope we have in Christ Jesus. It's a lamp to our feet, your word tells us, and a light for our paths. It sustains us and it is our refuge and our shield. Open now your word, O Father, to us through your Holy Spirit. In Christ our Savior's name we pray. And everyone said amen. Okay, here are a few of the verses, uh, passages, and teachings from this past week's reading that uh, stood out to me. Uh, in which I believe God spoke to me. Um, and, uh, you know, God speaks to us through his word. That's one of the primary ways he does it. And we often forget that. Well, the first thing I came across in my daily Bible that I've been reading um, was that I wanted to share with you was Proverbs 7, 2. The seventh chapter, verse 2 of Proverbs, where we read, it says, My commands... Keep my commands and live and my law as the apple of your eye. You know, how do we approach our time with God each day in Scripture? Do we look at it as a chore, something that has to be done to be completed just as quickly as we can do it? Or, or do we look at it as an opportunity to let God speak to our hearts and for us to get to know him uh, and to get to know him better? David said over in Psalm 119, 97, that wasn't this week, but it made me think of that. He said, oh, how I love your law. And do you love God's word? 
You'll fall in love with it if you spend time in it, I guarantee it. If you love something or someone, don't you spend time in it or with that person? Well, the same applies to God's Word. The second thing I saw this week that I wanted to share with you was uh, one of the earlier verses that I learned and memorized in my spiritual journey. It's uh, Psalm 20, verse 7. And, and it, I believe it was even a theme verse for uh, Henry Blackaby's very popular course back in the 1990s called Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing the Will of God. And I think it was uh, chapter 2, I believe, that that was the theme verse for that chapter that we're going to cover. And here, here's how it goes. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of, of our Lord, our God. And uh, of course, for the words chariots and horses, we could substitute many things, couldn't we? How about instead of horses and chariots, we could change it to read tanks and missiles. That's what we trust in uh, or, but the idea that's been conveyed in that verse that I think God wants us to see in that short and simple scripture is this. What are we putting our hope in? Are we putting our, our hope in things, in ourselves, uh, or in God and the Father of our Lord Jesus? You know, armaments and weapons have certainly changed throughout history, haven't they? but God has always remained the same. Or are you trusting in your job? You could insert that. Your savings, your investments. Those will all run out. They will deplete, be diminished. You know, as it says over in Proverbs 23, 5, which is another one of my favorites, it'll sprout wings and fly away like a bird, referring to money and wealth and those type of things. And we'll come across that passage, of Proverbs 23, 5. I believe it's in August. Um, and uh, if you're using our daily Bible that I've been using, it'll be on August the 14th. And I, I want to skip ahead uh, and grab that verse and take a sneak preview because it fits with uh, this 20, Psalm 27. You know, what are you putting your trust in? Here's what uh, Proverbs 23, 5 says. Cast but a glance at riches and they're gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. It's true, isn't it? Don't put your trust in things or armies or governments or worse yet, money. Put your trust in Christ Jesus and his heavenly Father. They always remain the same. Over in Hebrews 13, 8 in the New Testament, it reminds us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. You can count on him. You can put your trust in him. So that was one of the things that I felt like the Lord was showing me this week. Another thing uh, that I came across uh, that I uh, want to share with you is from Exodus 31, verse 18. I believe that was on this past Wednesday, February the 10th. He, referring to God, it says, gave Moses two tablets of the testimony tablets of stone written with the finger of God. And of course, that's when Moses was called up on Mount Sinai and God spent, he spent 40 days and nights there with God on that mountaintop. You see, God doesn't make us guess or wonder about what he said or desires from us, or he doesn't uh, cause us to have to specu speculate about his love for us. He's committed his words to written form. And think about the genius of that. God the Father, a spirit being, giving us his word in physical form. Remember, the word of God, we're told in 2 Timothy 3.16, and you'll remember that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. But it was inspired by God, all of it, which means that God wrote exactly what he wanted through the hands of the prophets and the apostles. And Paul teaches this over in 1 Corinthians 4, 6. I won't go there because of time, but he teaches us that it was not the apostles that were inspired, 
but their writings were inspired. The fourth thing that really caught my attention this week was how many times we read in the Old Testament parts that we were given, then the Lord said to Moses. We're right in the middle of uh, the wilderness journey with Moses and the Israelites in this section of scripture that we're reading. But just count up how many times it says, then the Lord said to Moses. And, many of, and in many of those instances, it was God speaking and appearing directly to Moses one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, almost always. And I think this week I counted at least a dozen times in just those seven days that we read that it said, said that. You know, Moses is known for his intimacy with God. I don't really know of anybody. Abraham, maybe a close second, and of course Enoch. Uh, but Moses met with him daily, talked to him face to face. <coughs> Excuse me. And because God knew uh, Moses and Moses knew God so intimately, think about all that Moses was able to witness God's almighty hand his hand in action, firsthand he got to witness it. Think about the 10 plagues. Think about the parting of the Red Sea. Think about the manna from heaven, the water from a rock in the desert. God appearing to him in the tabernacle. And through each of these, Moses knew God more intimately through every time he met with him and through these things. And the point is, when we obey God and spend time with him in his word, God is able to reveal himself, more of himself to us in a personal way. He allows us to know him and experience a deep intimacy with him when we're in God's word. A few comments on the chapters in the Old Testament that we covered this week uh, would be my next stop here that may have seemed a little bit monotonous and uh, boring to you because it was about God instructing Moses how he was to prepare the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant and all of the things that went with that, the lampstand, the table, the all, you know, the just on and on. And uh, I always worry that people might think those are boring. I, I, I passed that a long time ago. I look for things. And, and uh, but as I wrote in the margin of, of this Bible that I'm going through this year for my granddaughter Haven, I wrote to you, aren't you glad God cares about finite details? He cares for us in the same way. That caring, the, the details that he goes through that we read this week carries over to us. There is no detail in your life too small for God. And that's reassuring and it's comforting to me. How about you? Well, finally, um, I'll take a look with you at Proverbs 8, verses 10 and 11. And uh, let me read those to you. It says, uh, verse 10, Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her, referring to God's wisdom. And um, I wrote a little note in the margin. God's wisdom is so valuable that a price tag can't even be given to it. It's worth everything. You know, also we had uh, a lot in the New Testament too. I, I find myself emphasizing over the last several weeks a lot of the things in the Old Testament, but I think part of it's by default because this week we had several of Jesus's amazing parables that we covered. And I'd like to go over those, but I almost leave them alone because once you get into them, it goes, it, it's so deep that it would take a, a whole lesson or a study to go through those. In fact, I intend to do that after we finish the Truth Project. Um, I look forward to spending some time with you. Maybe we'll take a parable each week and uh, let God's Holy Spirit uh, teach us through that what it was that God uh, wants us to know from that. But we had several of those this week, and I'm sure you saw them if and we're enthralled with them as, as you should be. Well, let's quickly cover a highlight or two from Del Tackett's Truth Project from last week, Lesson 5, Part 1, and it was entitled Science. And this is where it really starts getting exciting in the Truth Project, uh, where the rubber hits the road. And the first thing that Del uh, did was he started by citing Psalm 19. That's a tremendous psalm. 
it's a tool that you ought to have in your memory toolbox. Um, I think there's 14 verses in Psalm 19 and kind of two parts. Um, and we'll look at one of those today, but uh, or think about it. And that's how Dell started out. And he pointed out that we don't live in a random chaotic universe, but it's unbelievably orderly and screams and proclaims the glory of God, just like we're told in Psalm 19, one through six. And that reads like this. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run its course. It rises at one end of the heavens and make it, makes it circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. Think about that. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. We see that every day, don't we? Well, Dell then takes us on a journey that science tries to answer and in truth always comes up short. The question, where did this world, this universe, the cosmos, <laughs> if you will, where did it come from? And Dale points out that there are only two possible answers. One, it had a beginning, either with or without God, it had a beginning. Or secondly, it's always existed. And Dale points out that both of these answers have problems if you leave God out of the equation. For example, if it had a beginning, and if you don't put God in the equation, what was before the beginning? That's a deep question. If it had a beginning, what was before? Nothing? How do you get something out of nothing? The second answer is if it always existed, science alone without God being in the equation, it suffocates itself. It chases the tail to where the dog finally lays down and because it can't catch it. Science has shown us that energy is always winding down. Dale reminded us of that. That's a, a scientific fact that we know to be true. And if that is the case, then if the world, the cosmos, the universe has always been, particularly if it's as old as some scientists try to tell us that it is, then why isn't it dead today? Particularly if it's billions of years old. Well, the conclusion that Dell leaves us with is that it actually takes faith <laughs> to believe those things if God's not in the equation. In fact, it takes a lot of faith uh, to believe that it had a beginning without God or that it always existed. <clears throat> More faith, in fact, than it takes to accept God's word. And how does God's word start? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, next week, we'll start considering the scientific facts on uh, science part two. Um, and if we're honest and truthful with ourselves, it'll point us uh, to a creator because <laughs> think about what happens. The more we discover in science, the more it points us to a creator. We'll consider such things as DNA, those type of things. But how about the almighty, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent creator of the world? It's hard to leave him out. So watch part six, um, the sixth video session, part two, science part two. Well, that's it for today. Hope you'll be with me again next week and can, as we continue our study of God's Word and seek to apply it to our lives. Until then, be safe, be in God, walk with our Lord Jesus, and be in the Word. Good day.